This is part one of a tutorial series on how to make the pop comic shader that I used in this scene. The final shader family will look something like this. In part one of this series, we'll just be covering the comic dots shading. Here's what the finished product of part one will look like. A simple comic dots shader with adjustable scale, influence, and color. So anyway, let's begin. Open a new project and delete the default cube. Add a UV sphere and shade it smooth. Change the light to a sun and change the intensity to 3.5. Rotate it to about here. Hit 1 on your numpad and then hit Ctrl 0 to move the camera to that view. Select your camera and slide it back and forth with G and ZZ until it's about here. Select your sphere and open up a shader window. Create a new material and name it Pop Comic Shader Tutorial. Add a Voronoi texture and connect it up with Ctrl Alt and left mouse click. Make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. Delete the principled BSDF. Then add a mapping and texture coordinates to the Voronoi with Ctrl T click. To make sure you have the Node Wrangling add-on enabled, go to Edit Preferences Add-on, search Node Wrangling and make sure it's checked. Drag the window of the texture coordinates into the vector of the mapping. Change the X scale of the mapping to 2. Change the Z rotation to 45. Drag the randomness of the Voronoi down to 0. Make the Voronoi scale about 75. Now drag everything over. Add a color ramp and place it between the Voronoi and the material output. Change the black value of the color ramp to about 0 0.483 and the white value to about 0 0.550. What this is controlling is the size of our largest dots, i.e. the dots that will appear in the darkest areas of our models. Now we want to make the dots rotate and scale based on the direction and intensity of a light source. So add a diffuse BSDF. Add a shader to RGB. Connect them up. Select them and drag them over. Add another color ramp. Connect the color output of the shader to RGB to the factor of the new color ramp. Move these over a bit. Now make some space between the Voronoi and your first color ramp. Add another mix RGB. Switch this one to linear light. Drag the color of the color ramp into the color 2 of the mix and the distance of the Voronoi into the color 1 of the mix. Drag the color output of the mix into the factor input of your original color ramp. Now it's actually looking like something. Now you can play around with the light and see that the dots scale and move with the direction of the light. Now make the black on our second color ramp a shade of gray. This will give us more of a gradient and make our light source appear stronger. Play around with this value until you get what you think looks good. Now zoom in to your original color ramp and adjust the values a bit to make the dots show up a little more. We want the small dots to show up in the most lit area. Now go to your second color ramp and adjust your values to reveal a bit more white between the largest dots, or whatever you think looks good. Now we want to control the influence of our dots in a more elegant way. Make some space between the mix and your original color ramp and add a mapping node and connect it between the mix and your original color ramp. Now when you play around with these values, it controls the influence of the dots. Then add a math node, switch it to multiply, and plug it into the from min of the mapping. Change the lower value of the multiply to 2. This will make everything go dark. Don't worry, there's a reason for this. Now let's move everything around really quick and add another math node and leave this one as add. Change the second value of the add node to negative 0.980. You could make this a subtraction node and set the value as a positive 0 0.98. Um, I just arrived at this number through trial and error, so I just do it this way. Anyway, change the top value of the add node to 1 and connect the add node into the first value of the multiply node. And now everything looks exactly as it did. These two nodes are for when we add everything to a node group, but let's find a better way to change our colors before we get into the node group. Uh, right now, we can change the colors of our color ramp directly, but that doesn't do us much good as we can't edit a color ramp from outside a node group. So add another mix RGB after your original color ramp and connect the color output of the color ramp to the factor of the mix. Make the first color on the mix black and the second color white, and connect it to the viewer. Once again, it appears that nothing has changed, but now we can change our base color and dots color by editing the colors of the mix, as such. But why do it this way instead of just editing the color ramp? Well, like I said, we need to be able to edit these colors from outside our node group. So change the colors back to black and white for now, and then highlight everything left of your material output. 
hit Control G. Now all the highlighted nodes are inside a node group. Hit Tab to exit the node group and see that we now have our own little node that we made. Hit Tab to get back into the node group. Now we have this new node that appeared. This is your group input. Grab it and bring it over to the mix. Grab the clear dot from your group input and drag it into the second color of the mix. Press N to open the side panel. Select the color 2 and change its name to base color. Press N again to close the panel. Now drag the clear dot of your group input into the first color of the mix. Press N to open your panel back up. Select color 1 and change its name to dots color. Close the side panel. Press tab to exit the node group. Now you can see that we have the two colors on our node and they can be changed without having to mess with the color map. This node group can now be added to any material like you would any other node just by hitting shift A and searching node group. But let's make this node group unique and change its name. Open up the side panel again with N and open the properties tab. Change the name to Adam Sleepy's Comic Dots Shader. Now we want to be able to control more than just the colors. So select your node group and hit tab to get back inside it. Select your group input and duplicate it with Shift D. Bring it over here. Drag the clear dot into the top value of your add node. Open up the side panel with N, change value to dots influence. Press tab to exit the node group and check to make sure our influence control works, and it does. Press tab to enter our node group again. Now let's add a way to control the scale of our dots. Bring this group input over a bit, move over your texture coordinates and mapping, and finally drag the clear dot from your group input into the scale of the Voronoi. Open the side panel with N, change the scale to dot scale. Press N to close the side panel, press tab to exit the node group, and test that our scale control works. And it does. Kinda looks better around 50, but I'll just set it back to 75. Now maybe you think dot scale should be above dot's influence on the list, so let's change that. Tab to get back in, and to open the side panel, make sure dot scale is selected, and then just click this up arrow. Tab to exit the node group, and that's it for part one of the tutorial series. In part two of the series, we'll be adding hatching to this shader with all kinds of adjustable sliders as such. And that's it. See you in the next video.